Well, here we are. We are having to do some work to this planter. What we have to do, I had trouble with this row 14. The pressure sensor um, warning went off, so I replaced this pressure sensor here. That didn't do it, so I, re I switched it with the row next to it. That didn't take care of it. So we have come to find out that this hydraulic downforce unit uh, needs to be replaced. So we're going to go ahead and swap that out. Should be rather simple here. And get a new one on there. So we'll get that swapped out quickly here. And we will get on with the rest of the planting here. So we have some new ones here. That were sent to us last year. I actually have, I believe there's four of them all together. One, two, three. Yeah, there's four of them here. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this whole complete unit out and see if we can't get this thing to plant the way it should. And then we'll kind of explain what led up to our problem here once we get this fixed and get it back going here. Well, we went ahead and we ended up removing the hopper. And this is, well, it's going to give us a better look at what we're actually doing here so you guys can see it. We have removed the hydraulic lines. They're just setting up here. We removed those. We've got our cotter pins pulled. We're going to go ahead and pull this module out of there. And we're going to go ahead and install uh, the new one. Now there's just a couple of pins in here. This one seems to be a little tight. There's no pressure on this. However, the pin is just a little... The pin just seems to be a little goofy. Well, it's got a little paint that has worked its way in there. So we'll get this guy out and then we'll set the new one in. I think what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to put the planter down to get the other one to dial itself in. So we'll get this one out of the way, get the new one in, and then we'll put this row unit down. I don't have a floor jack with me. The other idea would be to pick this row unit up to, to pin this uh, lower pin here. Our new one. Just get this guy in here like that. And then we're gonna have to. I don't I couldn't pull that. Maybe I can pull this out. I don't think so though. Alright, we'll put these plugs in the old one. Alright, now what I hope I can do is I hope I can pull this guy out. It's a little smaller than that. That's not good. easier than I thought.
there we go all right so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get our fittings lined back up and the damn phone is ringing so yeah all right we've got our cotter pins in we just need to put these fittings into the valve that was in about like that I need to grab a zip tie and then we need to run this through a test clean out purge the valve so on and so forth so we plug that guy into there this guy into here and we are golden now we need to run this through a purge test quickly here we'll do that and while that's doing that we'll let we'll get our tools cleaned up here so the first thing we went and did is we went and hooked our loopholes up to the system being that this whole system was open to the environment we need to purge all the air out of the system this is run off the power beyond hydraulics of the tractor so as soon as we start this tractor up it's going to run the oil through and it's going to work out any air that's in the system through this line let that run for a little while clean up our tools we'll shut it off unhook that line and then we'll run this through uh, some tests here to see if that took care of that problem so I need to get you guys on the charger because I don't have a spare battery with me. So I might as well throw you guys in the truck here. Okay, we got this all boxed back up. Now we'll go ahead and run through the in cab procedure here. Get everything flushed and calibrated, tested, and hopefully we can get right back to planting here. We are getting behind <laughs> all right so we have flushed the line we ran that loop toe hose on there and we're going to start through these procedures all again and we'll kind of just show you as we go along This is the air purge test. We've got four of these tests to do. We'll join up with you as they go through whether or not they are successful. We are about to the end of the air purge test, which they all passed that one previously, and it looks like they're all going to pass this one as well. Again, we'll move on to the next one. Valve flush test, begin the procedure. We've got to meet the criteria. We'll hit that next, one through 16. We'll let this go, and then we'll join up with you as we get through uh, this test here. All right, we are making our way to the end of the valve flush test. Looks like they're all gonna make that one as well. That one made its way through now we'll do the valve test and then we've got one more after this one and that is the accumulator test I think this test here we had some failures right off the bat so let's keep our fingers crossed hopefully we get through all of these as well all right on this valve test we had rows 11 and 12 fail so we're going to redo them again over to here we're going to go 11 and we're going to go to 12. i don't know if it'll do it like that or if it wants to do it uh in pairs of two 
in other words four at a time so we're gonna see if this will go through this time if it doesn't we're gonna go into our, our accumulator test and then we're just gonna get planting we'll call the guys at CAS see what they say we need to do next here but um, it might go through this time as well run tractor wide open now 11 failed 12 failed okay we're gonna go along with our next one our last one is our accumulator test we'll go ahead and try our accumulators hopefully we get a pass on all of these all right on the accumulator test we had rows two and four failed we're going to go ahead and get planting and we'll call the guys at CAS and see what they have for answers i've got some notes made here and let's get planting well so far so good i don't have any codes or issues with the monitor here so we're golden we're gonna worry about them little tiny problems uh, later on today or I'll worry about them first thing in the morning I did text Rich and Kaz to see what he has for answers here as far as what do we have going on with the valve and accumulator test with those particular rows failing now here is our uh, map coming up on the uh, field view screen here uh, we are doing a prescription so you can see the different areas are different colors I do have some red around the outside my first time around I uh, didn't get the, the prescription up quick enough you can see we're real red right there because it was planting at a lower rate it was actually planting at the rate uh, that the planter is uh, programmed to plant when it's out of the boundary. So I actually had the, the previous field map pulled up. See these skips here? That is where the field drive unhooks or it, it comes, uh, it loses its connection to the iPad. I don't know if I've got a Bluetooth issue or if I've got an issue with the field drive or the drive puck itself coming from the data port down on the tractor. It's right down here. It's getting all of the information from the Green Star display. Then it feeds it to the iPad and then you're seeing this information that uh, we're seeing here. Just come on. Uh, just lost its connection there drives me crazy I did try another field view drive um, that didn't seem to help I don't know if I've got an issue with the iPad or if I have a connection issue down in on the um, tractor data port here so we're just going to keep at her here. I'm waiting for an answer back from Kaz, and we'll let you know what they end up coming up with here. Well, we are now into the following day. We had our fair share of problems here yesterday. Yesterday, needless to say, was not too productive of a day, but you're going to have them days. I know I'm going to get some comments down in the comment section. Everybody's typing away right now. And the comments are going to go like this. There's guys that are going to say, you know, my granddaddy's John Deere 494 planner. Or my pappy's John Deere 7000. Or my 7200. Or my 1750 corn planter doesn't have all them gadgets on there and you know what Andy we can just plant corn well you're absolutely right you can just plant corn you don't need this technology to do a good job but 
uh, what this technology does tell you is when you have the slightest bit of a problem, it tells you just like that. You don't have to rely on going the whole length of the field or maybe making four or five passes down through the field and all of a sudden you get to the end and oh my god, you know, row one or row four or row three or whatever is not planting any corn. Or heaven forbid you go to fill that seed box up and all the hoppers are almost empty except one is right chuck full. <laughs> well, that one didn't plant any corn. So, you know, it's only one row, one out of four, one out of six, or the big guys with eight rows, or even the bigger guys with the 24 or what have you. You know, it's just uh, either going to be 25% or 15% or 3% or whatever. That row just doesn't get planted. Or uh, if they are running any kind of downforce, whether it be a spring of some sort or an airbag or what have you, maybe their spring breaks, but yet they don't know it. They might plant a whole day those uh, lever style springs it was hard to tell uh, whether or not those had a problem uh, it was hard to tell whether or not those were broken so uh, you might plant a lot of ground with no downforce on a row or any given row with the hydraulic downforce or even the pneumatic downforce you kind of know what each row is doing if you have a sensor on each row. The other system that we had prior to this one, I don't know if we had three sensors on this planter or four. Twelve row, there's, there's three. This one has a sensor on each row. It knows exactly how much downforce each row has. Now, uh, as far as a spring goes, a spring in time stretches out, it relaxes, it wears out. Yes, you could say, hey, every three years we replace all our springs. Or as the year goes on or the years go on, I increase the amount of force that I put on my springs. Okay, yes, that's that's uh, that's okay too, but. Um, as we're going across the field, this planter is all the time adjusting for uh, the adequate amount of downforce. And as far as seed spacing goes, you can have an issue with a cable drive or a, a tooth out of a sprocket or something like that that might limit you to skips or doubles or what have you and in time you're going to see a deficiency in yield as those problems compound themselves. Uh, if you've only got 25 acres of corn and you crossed your fingers and everything worked perfect for you, hey, you, uh, you lucked out. But um, you could also have 2,500 acres of corn and you could have just a percent of that not do a good enough job and in the end that's quite a bit of money that you're leaving on the table so with this technology you try to achieve the best job you can and sometimes it does cost you a little time but had you not had that technology you would not know what kind of a job your older piece of equipment did. You might get to the end of the year and you might say, oh, you know, I didn't rebuild my units uh, this year because I didn't have to. So the following winter, you, you take all four of your units off or all six or eight or 12 or 16 or 24 and you say, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have somebody rebuild them. And whoever does it for you, whether you do it yourself or you have somebody put them on a stand and they they test them all ahead of time and they say, geez, you know, two out of the four or three out of the eight or 
two out of the six, you know, they weren't really doing the job they were supposed to be doing. Well, when did they start to fail? They start to fail the last uh, couple acres of the year, or did they plant all of the corn uh, at, you know, the wrong population or what have you? So, um, it is what it is. I mean, there's an argument either way, all the way around. If you want to plant acres, and that's all you want to do is you just want to go out there and plant acres by all means. Buy an old corn planter. Do not monkey around with this technology. Just hook that corn planter on your tractor and you know what, go out. It's, it's recreational farming at that point. Just start making lines in the field. You know, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter whether or not you have crop to feed your cows or grain to put in your uh, grain bin. So that is that. And I've got just a little sliver here. And then we've got some short rounds to do on the bottom side of this field. They are talking about a rain shower moving through the area. Uh, here this afternoon, we should be able to get done with this particular farm that we are on uh, here right now. And uh, we're down to the last thousand acres or so. And the last thousand is going to go pretty slow because uh, we're jumping around quite a bit. But, uh, with that being said, that is kind of do it for this video. I've rambled on long enough. I've preached to the choir long enough here and some of these guys are just not going to be happy with um, this new stuff regardless whether they have the ability to use it or not. They're always going to talk it down and I get it. You know, it, it gets frustrating sometimes uh, to deal with this stuff, but in the end you know that you have done the best job that you could possibly be doing by what data you have received from the display. Now another thing too, I don't have markers on this corn platter. And I think this corn platter is eight years old. And you know how many days I've had problems in eight years with uh, guidance or what have you? Zero. I have never had a problem where I could not get um, reception from the satellites, whether it be shade in a field or what have you. We have never had any problems as far as uh, maintaining a satellite signal. And um, I have a fertilizer disc that has a stone caught in it. It's not turning, so I'm going to go ahead and knock that little pebble out. And that is going to do it for this video. So thanks for watching, folks. And we will catch you at the next one.